first of all, thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations on the film. I have to say, Patrizia Reggiani, that is the role of a lifetime. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for taking the time to talk with me today. It's really very kind of you. And, uh, you know, I think when people say, uh, you know, performance of a lifetime, that uh, what I felt m doing this role was that I put my lifetime into the performance. And uh, it's something I'll never forget. I, I, every day on set, I was so aware that my feet were planted on the soil of the home of my ancestors and that they worked so hard so that my family could have a better life and look at me now look where we are that's really interesting because as, as an italian american do you think that allowed you to bring in another layer to your approach to to playing this role i think that it brought in another layer for sure because of my reverence for italy and for italian people but being italian american is different than being italian uh, my family came over and was immigrants here, uh, but then we assimilated. So uh, assimilation changes culture. And I grew up in a culture of plenty. I grew up with a ton of food on the table and a lot of celebration over family and relationships and realness. And so I would say in a way, yes, because of my reverence for being Italian American. And also it was a challenge because I was very aware very quickly once I started to research Patrizia Gucci, Patrizia Reggiani, uh, and watch her interviews that this is a real Italian woman. This is not an Italian American. And that means that my ethnicity had to be accurate. You totally absorbed yourself in the role, and that is very, very obvious. Much has been made of that. Tell us about that particular approach that's been called everywhere, you know, method acting. Yeah, I consider myself a method actress. Um, I, I don't view this as a badge of honor that I need to wear, nor do I think it's the best way to act. Uh, it's just my way. I studied Lee Strasberg method when I was younger, and I um, studied at Circle in the Square. Uh, I learned lots of sense memory technique, uh, a lot of personification. I worked with Susan Batson, an incredible incredible acting teacher for this film, uh, and I used the Susan Batson method as well. Uh, I worked with uh, Beatrice Pelucha uh, on the movie, and uh, she's a real Italian woman who worked on my dialect with me and was with me every day. So I spoke in my accent for six months before we started filming, and then I continued to speak in it uh, for three and a half months. Uh, so I was in my accent all the time. That must be incredibly difficult, and also it, it must play with your head slightly? You know, it started to play with my head later. Not at the six months leading up to the filming, uh, it, 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 it didn't play with my head. I was very much in control of the chaos, and I feel that I was in control of the chaos the whole time. I mean, there is a discipline to chaos. You have to harness your passion in a way that uh, allows you to be present and free on set. Uh, and also, then once we started filming, what was challenging was feeling the real life symptoms of being Patricia all the time and what she went through. A woman living in a man's world and a woman that, you know, you saw the film and you, you watched it, you know, she, she's very much an outsider and she's not of the same class as the Gucci's. And I actually really resent this idea that the media talked about her as a gold digger. I think she was really in love, and I think she just was always looking for an entry point to try to matter, a, a way to survive. And I don't think that women should be called hustlers and gold diggers because they want to have a better life. Uh, I don't. This was not about money for her, because when they got married, he didn't have money. He was not. Uh, he didn't have half of, half of Gucci. When she put a hit out on him, they were divorced. So the financial stakes that people think were there were not, and uh, the love was. I don't think so. I don't want to collude with Patrizia Gucci, and I think I think she wants to drive a famous narrative of herself as a notorious killer, and a, a woman that advised Gucci. And I think what she did was wrong. I think she deeply regrets it, and um, if anything. I extend my heart to her daughters, and uh, they probably don't want that, uh, but 
for what it's worth, I, I do care deeply that this must be very painful for them. And, um, you know, as an actress, that's something I have to reckon with. Interesting, isn't it, what you say about how she was treated as a woman and there are statements made during the film, you know, what do you know, you're a woman. That scenario couldn't happen in a big fashion house now, could it? We do see a lot of females that are leading the way, or do we still have a lot of work to go? I think this happens all the time. I think it happens all over the world all the time, and I think that men are very comfortable working with other men because having to be held accountable to a woman uh, it, is, it creates discomfort, and so it's just easier to push women out. And I think it happens all the time. I, I don't. I do. I think in some places it doesn't for sure. I, th I think some places uh, have ethics and values that uh, run from the top down and uh, are truly a part of the fabric of b their business. But I also believe that this is very alive. What I can say though is I had a wonderful experience working with Ridley Scott. Ridley Scott is an incredible director, and I was on set with mostly men every day, but I felt very empowered by him. He cared what I thought. He cared what I was feeling. He cared about my mental health as I was experiencing a lot of trauma while we were filming, uh, calling upon my own life experiences in order to create sense memory for Patrizia. Uh, you know, this, was, this was a very positive experience and also challenging, but not because I was inside of a patriarchal system that was really oppressing me, um, but I was inside of an alternate reality that felt real. Do you still feel like you have a lot to prove as an actor? Because the world knows you, of course, as a, a multi-award winning singer. A Star is Born was a huge success, an Oscar winning film, and you were Oscar nominated, you won for the song. This is only your second feature and you are the lead, you're in practically every single scene. I, do you feel comfortable now in that acting skin? I do feel comfortable in my acting skin. I, I've been an actor since I was a young girl, and I, I have put acting into my music my whole life. Uh, to say that I would need to prove myself, that doesn't feel accurate to me. Uh, but uh, what resonates with me is this idea that earning my place or earning my spot uh, it feels that feels accurate, like doing more movies, doing even more work, doing even more research. Uh, but I don't believe in trying to prove yourself in that way. I, I believe in earning it, and I believe in hard work. But proving to me has a smell of, I really want people to like me, and I really want people to smile. I really want people to like themselves. I really want people to enjoy life. And this movie is very funny and it's entertaining and it's, it's beautiful and it's sad and it's wild and it's a ride. And I, after 18 months of COVID, I feel really happy that I had the honor and privilege of working on something that I believe will make people smile and have a good time. What do you think about the Oscar prospects? Because of course, this is the talk has started already with a role like that you're going to get an Oscar nomination at the very least. You know, I, it's, I love artists. So I love to celebrate all creative people. And I'm actually not competitive with anyone but myself. So being in a competition feels very strange to me because I want to celebrate all the people that have been making movies and making all kinds of art through COVID. But I do really appreciate that sentiment. And... I know how coveted the Oscars are, and that, that is an honor, and it's an honor that has always been, meant a lot to me. Are you in a great place now um, in terms of your own mental health? Your Born This Way Foundation is doing incredible stuff, you. and your film is about mental health as well. Patrizia Rajani, we watch this disintegration, don't we? Yeah. And people are going to go away thinking about mental health implications. The world is full of that right now, let's be honest. Absolutely. Um, I'm in a much better place with my mental health. Thank you for asking. I hope you are as well. Um, in terms of the film, I had a lot of mental challenges while working on the film because she did. You know, she had a lot of mental challenges and she was so traumatized getting waterboarded by these men, constantly disposed of, left behind left because she's lost her looks, he doesn't love her anymore, he leaves her for a younger, more beautiful woman. I mean, Patrizia is somebody that is 
fighting for her life. And when you're in survival mode on camera all the time, I studied animals actually for this. I studied a house cat, a fox, and a, a panther. I studied the way that they seduced, the way that they hunted, the way they reproduce, uh, the way that they enjoy themselves. Uh, and you know, a house cat has a particular air about it. A fox is quite playful when it hunts. It's almost funny, which is where her humor comes from. And then when she gets served divorce papers, she turns from a fox into a panther. And working with the animal and studying the animal, it changes the way that you move. And to me, there's something primal about mental health that we don't, I think, give ourselves enough credit for. It's the animal in us. It's our brain. It's part of our body. And I pray for the world all the time. I spent the first uh, few months of COVID raising over $150 million with Global Citizen and the World Health Organization uh, for the Solidarity Fund, uh, which provided um, equipment to uh, healthcare workers. I pray all the time for the healing of healthcare workers. I, the, the trauma they have been through is immense and, and, and world changing. And the mental struggles that we've all gone through during COVID have been real. And in my own way, you know, I, I, I used to try to make people laugh during quarantine. And I would say, I've been quarantining for years. I don't go out. I'm very reclusive. But I, I can see the toll that this took on the world. And I just really pray for everybody. And I think that it's a good time to lean into kindness. I think kindness is the only perfect system because it, it goes two ways. And if you do it and you commit to it, it doesn't go bad ever.